Hey everyone, this week saw a rather strange turn of events. First there was the retrospective story talking about Martin Bashir's subterfuge in order to gain an interview with Princess Diana. Prince William reacted with a professional tone of sadness and disappointment, putting out a statement. Whereas Prince Harry saw things very differently and was disgusted at his own mother of all people hogging the limelight, upstaging him and Meghan's interview, before going on camera yet again to complain about it all. You know, the last time I saw an interview with someone with such little lack of restraint or self-control, it was Oliver Reed drunkenly stumbling onto Michael Aspel's show back in the day. Anyway, so talking about drunken mishaps from the 90s, that segues perfectly into the first of these stories, the Princess Diana one, because you remember the classic joke back in the day about how Princess Diana's favourite drink was a Harvey Wallbanger with six chasers. Anyway, the story this week was about Martin Bashir, and how as a fairly junior member of staff he'd somehow landed one of the interviews of the century. And it turns out he did it by falsifying bank statements to gain trust along with a series of stories that were made up, but nonetheless confirmed Diana's growing paranoia to the extent that the state was out to get her. She trusted him, and that ultimately led her to spurn the security and protection services, relying on Dodi al Fayed's team instead. We know how that ended up, though. Two years later, she discovered that sometimes stopping a Mercedes is harder than stopping world hunger, and she was all over the radio and the dashboard in the front seats. The Queen Mother famously caught the bouquet at the funeral, and Martin Bashir went on to continue a successful and journalistic career with the BBC backing him all the way. The BBC was still defending Bashir up until last week when he stepped down, but the story actually came to attention last year due to a freedom of information request which the BBC lawyers tried to fight all the way. They certainly defend their own. This is the same corporation that defended Jimmy Savile for years, although they were pretty okay with slandering Cliff Richard, slandering James Dyson, slandering Lord McAlpine. You know, that list goes on, and ironically, they could probably commission quite a good and lengthy television series in all of those incidents. Let's talk about Prince Harry though, because apparently having learned absolutely nothing from his mother, he decided to go on television yet again for another interview, wallowing in self-pity and presenting a frankly delusional image that despite being multi-millionaires living the height of luxury in sunny Santa Barbara, they're actually just the same as you and me. If anything, they're worse off, we should feel sorry for them apparently. Sure, they don't have to work a 10-hour shift in an Amazon warehouse or worry about if they can pay the gas bill next month, but they are a bit moody and done in the dumps and that's apparently much worse. There's a general vibe that despite having a lavish wedding at Westminster Abbey paid for by the taxpayer and broadcast around the world, they didn't get enough attention paid to them at the time. Meghan seemingly feels hard done by because she didn't constantly get treated like a queen. And the thing is, no, because you're not a queen like the queen or Kate who will literally be the queen one day. Anyways, the most senior royals living in America, at least, they're on top of that particular pile and finally have the platform to say and do what they want, which they call, quote, their truth, and everyone else calls, quote, a bunch of egotistical and fanciful walkery. I say that they're the most senior royals living in America, but that's just for the time being. One day, maybe Prince Andrew will wind up there for several years living in a one-bedroom flat with bars in the windows. I imagine if he were somehow arrested and extradited and imprisoned in America, Harry would probably be the first to cut a deal with Amazon Prime to go on TV and explain how Prince Andrew planned it years ahead as a calculated and deliberate ploy to hurt Meghan's feelings and distract from their social outreach work. This, of course, is the work where Prince Harry talks about how Asian people have had to suffer appalling racist attacks, while sneakily omitting the bit about how they had to suffer actual attacks from him and his helicopter gunship in Afghanistan. Anyway, one last thing before I go that no one else seems to have mentioned. Look at Harry's hands. They're really, really old looking. I'm the same age as him, give or take, and mine don't look like that. Anyway, nice suit though. See you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.